Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy tool you can use to troubleshoot and repair control boards. You don't even have to have much electrical knowledge to make these repairs if you have this tool. So make sure you stick around and learn something new. If you find this video to be helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, for more DIY and tinkering videos. If you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of appliance repair videos. Mostly on appliances that I find on, on the side of the street for free. And one of the most costly repairs that I come across is issues with control boards. For example, this is a washing machine control board. And often the time, however, these issues are often um, repairable. Because most of the time, these issues are from two main components that are gone bad. One... Either it's an issue with the capacitors, which is mostly what we're going to be dealing with in this video, and the second main issue is relays, which I'll try to cover in another video, but sometimes these things can get stuck or they can uh, burn out, which can lead to issues. But those two issues can, are often the cause for a lot of control board problems, and it's a shame to have to throw away an entire control board for something that small. Plus, these control boards are not cheap. So the very first thing I do when I pull out a control board is I examine it for defects. Now, sometimes they're apparent like char marks or burn marks. And so those are really apparent. Like we can see that burn mark is right under some of these relays right here. So I'd be, if I was a betting man, if I was just to replace these two relays or one of these relays, that's probably what was causing this issue uh, but then another physical thing I look for is to see if there's any sort of bulge on these compa capacitors um, in this case it's not so but that doesn't mean that these capacitors are good um, over time these capacitors can build up what's called equivalent series resistance and that prevents the flow of electricity and eventually it'll prevent it'll completely block out um, whatever's downstream of that capacitor. The resistance will be so high, so it'll block out the electricity um, from coming through. And there are tools, fortunately for us, that are designed to detect that um, equivalent series resistance, also called the ESR. Now, one of these tools is this ESR meter right here that's made by this company, GME. I bought this off of Amazon. I believe they also sell it through their website as well. Um, the prices are always varying. I bought mine a couple of years ago. I think it was 120 or 130 bucks. Um, it may seem pricey, but two of these boards or one of these boards, if you have a if you're buying a brand new board, pretty much makes up for the cost of that. And so basically, this thing right here can tell you exactly how much ESR a capacitor has and it comes with this nice chart that shows you um, if it's within the good range which is green the yellow which is suspect or if it's in the red range if the resistance is so high that it's all the way over here and basically it's got on the x-axis it's got a lot of the common capacitor values in microfarads so from point four seven to two point two K that's in microfarads. So that's a really large capacitor. But it goes you have this no one next to the one thousand microfarad capacitor. So pretty much all of the common micro capacitors are on the X axis and their ohms what the the resistance that they build up is on the Y axis. So basically I'm gonna show you how to use this and it looks a little confusing, but it's really simple. And the beautiful part about this is that it allows you to test the capacitors in circuit. So you don't have to desolder them. You don't have to take them out. All you have to do is find out where the prongs to the capacitors are on the other side and put these two tweezers and it'll tell you exactly what the resistance is. So that's two things I do immediately after pulling out a control board or if I suspect a control board issue. And obviously I check the input and output voltages 
But after that, if I suspect that it is a control board issue, I'll check for physical damage. Then I'll pull out my ESR meter and I'll check the ESR or the resistance on these capacitors. It, it's really easy to, to go through an entire control board full of capacitors and check their re resistance within five or 10 minutes. Now, you may be wondering, what about the capacitance? So this value right here um, in microfarads, that stability of the capacitor to store charge. Now for pretty much any sort of multimeter that's worth its, um, what's worth anything has a value for capacitance. However, to actually use that value, that capacitor has to be taken out of circuit. So um, to troubleshoot, um, to troubleshoot capacitors based on that capacitance value, um, it's very difficult and, because that would uh, involve taking them out of, out of circuit and then actually seeing how, how what their capacitance is, i.e. their ability to store charge, which is that right there. A solid line with the curved line next to it. Um, you should just go to it like that. But this is uh, not to say that the um, the capacitance is not important because a lot of these uh, capacitors have um, tolerances of um, the, what the capacitance is, and if the capacitor is outside those tolerances, that needs to be changed as well. But most of the time, it's the resistance that they build up that causes um, them to be bad. But this is a good tool, the capacitance is a good tool for diagnosing um, capacitors on induction motors. For example, a run capacitor or a start capacitor um, on like an HVAC unit or even on washing machines, um, which have, uh, I can just show you one of these right now, but uh, it, this is what I would use capacitance on right here. Um, it has a range actually um, right on it too. It's a little bit behind that bracket, but. It tells you what uh, should be 189, I think it's 210 uh, microfarads of capacitance. So this is what I typically use capacitance on. Then the ESR, um, the resistance is what typically causes um, the capacitance, capacitors to be bad in, uh, in most control boards. So I'm going to show you how to get a good reading on an ESR meter with uh, capacitors in circuit. All right, so let's actually take a measurement using the ESR meter. And it's quite simple. All we have to do is power it on and make sure it's set to ESR. Um, after we power it on, you hear about a, a, a beep about a second into it, and that's just uh, an auto calibration that it's doing. You don't have, actually have to do anything. The meter comes with these probes. They're in the shape of tweezers. And it's quite, help, quite useful when we're doing um, in-circuit testing. All right, so the next step is pretty much getting the capacitance of the capacitor that we're interested in testing. In this case, the first one we'll be doing is this 1000 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitor. Now for the um, sake of ESR, we don't really care about the voltage rating, we just care about what the capacitance is. So in this case, it's a 1000 microfarad capacitor. So we just have to keep an eye out on this portion of the x-axis where it says 1000 microfarads so we're going to we're going to try to do this and uh, provide a good view of it as well so the hardest part about this is finding where the capacitors uh, where the prongs are for the capacitors on the underside of the pcb now these electrolytic capacitors are do have a polarity where they have a positive and a negative side but since we're just measuring resistance it doesn't matter what the polarity is, so we don't have to worry about that. We just need to find the two prongs. So for this one right here, the two prongs are right there. So I'm gonna put my tweezers on it. And as you can see, the, it's lining up at 0.1 ESR, so 0.1 resistance. Now if we go all the way to where it says one kilo, what, one, 1,000 microfarads, on the scale, we see that 0.1 is in the green range. So that tells us that this capacitor is actually good. So we can move on to another capacitor on the board. And just like that, we can um, easily knock out all these capacitors in a matter of seconds. Next, we'll try this 
22 microfarad capacitor and locate that under the board. I think it's right here. And we can see 22 is right there. So if we go up 22 and go all the way, so anything that's below 1.2 ohms of resistance would be good. Anything above that going all the way to about six or I should say about four and a half ohms of res resistance would be the suspect range. Anything from four and a half to higher would be considered bad for that um, for that rating of a capacitor. So 22 microfarads. I believe the prongs are right here for it. Let's see. There we go. So it's giving us a rating of 0.8. So if we go from 0.8 and we scroll all the way to 22, we find that, that that's in the green range as well. So that capacitor is good. So the last capacitor we'll be testing is this capacitor right here, which is also a 22 microfarad capacitor. Um, this brown one right there. And that one's kind of easier to see where the probes are. So we're going to come over here and we're going to put there, there. And we see that this one's got a little bit of a higher um, resistance. So it's got a 2 ohms of resistance at 22. So you would go to 2 all the way to 22 would go, would put us in that yellow range. So that means it's, it's a suspect capacitor. And that makes sense because one of these relays was also blown right here as well. So um, if that was me, I would unsolder that capacitor, replace the capacitor, and then replace this relay because this capacitor, capacitor is worth like 10 cents. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful in troubleshooting your control boards. And if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up.